this is a podcast brought to you by mcleans.ca, the destination for the national conversation. Thanks for listening. So Nick, first of all, your story on Detroit uh, was absolutely lovely. I really enjoyed reading it. Well, thank you, Jess. <laughs> what, what really struck me, though, I have to say, was some of the images were absolutely shocking. I mean, this place used to be home to captains of industry, the, the big greats, like, like, tell me, like who? Well, uh, it's a neighborhood just north of Midtown uh, in Detroit uh, called Boston Edison, and it used to be home uh, beginning in the last century um, mm -hmm. uh, to people like Henry Ford lived there, uh, Sebastian Kresge, who started what would later become Kmart, for example, uh, the owner of the Detroit uh, Tigers and, and Briggs Stadium, Walter Briggs. They all lived in this um, relatively small green enclave um, and could jet down to downtown Detroit when downtown Detroit Existed. was still a viable yeah. uh, uh, place to do work. And now it's still green, still an enclave, and it's in the middle of a post-industrial wasteland and it's uh, so lost there that many locals, uh, people who grew up in Detroit, uh, don't even know it exists. Uh, this is um, uh, a demonstration of just how green a place it is. Um, it, it's a place of mansions, 10,000 square foot, foot places with endless grounds, um, beautiful gardens, and they're still maintained by the people who live there now. Um, who are all kinds of things. They, some of them work for the city. Uh, some of them are people who've moved to Detroit to start up uh, you know, new businesses in this crazy post-industrial uh, town. Uh, some of them, lots of gay couples live here. Um, lots of people who uh, would never have had a shot, except now that the prices are so low, they can move in. So this is inside the Siegel home. It's the Siegel that um, started up the uh, American Lady Corset Company, which was a big deal back in the day. And uh, this is, you step into this gorgeous home, um, this wood paneling, it's a, it's a way of cutting um, the, the wood that is no longer used anymore because it's so wasteful. Mm -hmm. But it, the effect is astonishing because the grain is, uh, is right there, uh, just gorgeous. Uh, uh, and um, this home sold for $450,000 uh, last fall. Uh, so in comparison to Toronto, where that would get you um, a, a real fixer-upper, uh, yeah. It's astonishing what, what, what you can buy in, in Detroit. Uh, this is the dining room of the same home. Uh, you can't see it, but over on the left side is a hidden door mm -hmm. uh, that will uh, get you into the walk-in safe. Um, oh, and it's still, it's still there as it was. Um, this is in the kitchen of the uh, Siegel home. Uh, it is a plate warmer. Um, you, you could open that up and, uh, I mean, the, the home has a capacity to serve just enormous banquet dinners. And this, I say in my story that it's sort of a steampunk uh, fantasy. This is up, upstairs in the attic of the, of the uh, Siegel home. It's the guts of the, the elevator. Uh, and there's an elevator that would bring um, Siegel, Mr. Siegel, up from the first floor to the second floor uh, <laughs> where, where he would sleep. And, and on this floor, which was the third floor, it's like a, a rabbit warren because it's where the servants uh, used to sleep. Oh, wow. um, now, I wanted to give you a sense of uh, just how uh, surrounded by um, a wasteland uh, mm -hmm. Boston Edison, the neighborhood is. This is literally one block, um, uh, I think it's north of uh, uh, Boston, uh, West Boston, which is where the Siegel uh, mm -hmm. mansion that we were just discussing is. And it's a burnt out um, husk of, of a building. Uh, I think it would have been a very elegant uh, apartment yeah. building at one point. And um, just a block uh, uh, north of that, um, uh, there are drug houses. Um, uh, there's kind of constant flow of, of young men in and out of the, uh, the, the, the building. And uh, it's n not something you'd want to walk by uh, on your own or at all. Here is another uh, sort of um, beautiful, once beautiful uh, Boston Edison home, now sliding into um, decay, and that in front of there is uh, one of the wild pheasants that has made um, the back alleys and, and, and the uh, decaying homes um, a home uh, in Boston Edison, these beautiful wild pheasants. Uh, what happened was that they started seeing um, sort of the effects of what would become the uh, mortgage crisis uh, mm -hmm. of 2008. They, they, they felt it earlier. In about 2006, 
uh, the people who um, look after the local residents who've made such a beautiful job of maintaining the level of, of, of the neighborhood in a way that uh, the rest of Detroit hasn't uh, accomplished, uh, even, even they couldn't save um, many of these homes which fell into foreclosure. They were purchased by people who probably couldn't afford them. The credit cri crisis comes. They can't pay their bills, mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, particular home is is not uh, an example of that. It was just an elderly woman who who died, and mm -hmm. nobody was there to kind of pick up the uh, uh, the slack. This is a foreclosure, <sighs> right? Um, and it's a little, you know, it's a little bit more modest than the the other homes that we've been looking at. We mm -hmm. can tell it's a foreclosure uh, because of the um, the plywood in the windows, um, which is um, there's been no attempt made by the bank to um, make these look nice. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, we'll see a little bit later that uh, there are attempts in, in other homes uh, to do better than this. Um, uh, but this kind of situation has uh, attracted all kinds of uh, thieves and uh, uh, people who, 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 who mine these homes for all of the scrap right. uh, that, uh, you know, it, it, it's a good business, and, and, and there's not a lot of consequences for the people who, who make a business out of it. This is another home. This is a, a, a probably a Detroit Land Bank a home. In fact, it is a Detroit Land Bank home, purchased for probably, you know, in the neighborhood of, say, $10,000. <laughs> um, and what they're doing here is they're using Obama dollars, or they're using kind of uh, uh, neighborhood stability uh, mm -hmm. uh, funding, to uh, completely revamp the home. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring in uh, a new um, kind of base uh, for how much these homes are costing. Because some of the homes, um, I mean, if you're, if you're able to buy homes in Boston Edison for $10,000 because of the, the shape that they're in, right. um, it, it does the neighborhood no good. And right. in a funny way, it does the rest of Detroit no good either. Uh, the people of uh, Boston Edison, uh, uh, the, the, the local neighborhood association, were really lobbying the city and other groups to come in and spend some of the dollars that they've been spending in the really uh, decaying wastelands outside of Boston Edison. Mm -hmm. They said, look, if, if you don't stabilize Boston Edison, then there's no hope for the uh, even uh, more uh, challenged neighborhoods outside of it. Right. So you need an anchor. And Boston Edison, they, they argued, should be your anchor. And they were heated, and uh, organizations like the Detroit uh, Land Bank uh, uh, and also uh, other places like the Central Detroit uh, Christian Community Development uh, Corporation, um, they came in and they are, are revamping this, and then they're going to sell the homes for, let's say, $60,000, $80,000. Even that is... Yeah. The, uh, look at the plywood. It's been painted black here, mm -hmm. and that's an attempt uh, to... Um, uh, sort of um, uh, take the edge off. Right. Um, the, um, the, I mean, look, look here. The, the the locals in Boston Edison, uh, they may be angry with the thieves who come in to strip the homes of all of that good uh, good stuff that they continue to uh, to have inside of them. Uh, but they really hate the banks. Really. Yes. Um, this oh is. Oh my goodness. This is Henry Ford's home. So Ford was, was living here when he put the Model T into production and when he uh, implemented the famous assembly line manufacturing process, uh, which, you know, revolutionized uh, the auto business and so many other businesses also. Um, and he also doubled uh, the wages of, of the, his factory hands so that they could actually have an opportunity to buy cars themselves. He right. did all of that, all the things that he's, uh, many of the things that he's so famous for, he was doing uh, he did while he lived uh, in, right in, in, in Boston Edison. And I wanted to show you, mm -hmm. uh, this is a shot that didn't make it into the magazine, I don't think, but it is Henry Ford's Cherrywood uh, toilet. <laughs> and um, it's still in, in working order. Uh, the president, uh, residents of the home uh, are, are, are preservationists, and uh, they've done everything they can to, uh, to keep uh, the, uh, the home in, in, in good working order. Uh, this is from the Briggs home. Uh, Walter Briggs owned the Detroit um, uh, Tigers and, uh, and Briggs Stadium. And you could see just the little details. Th this was, um, I believe, in one of the servants' um, kind of uh, common room. Mm -hmm. And you, you can see that it's, uh, it was used to, to call um, uh, the, uh, the, the house staff uh, to wherever the Briggs might be. Uh, Mr. Briggs' bedroom, the library, um, 
This is also the Briggs uh, house, and it was for sale when I was in uh, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And um, it had been uh, uh, up for sale for months, and uh, the the asking price uh, was uh, incredible. It was four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, and they had to drop it because it had been uh, up on the market for so long. Uh, they then asked four hundred forty-five thousand dollars. The amazing thing is that in two thousand, it was appraised for one point eight million dollars. Oh my goodness! So you can see the uh, really precipitous drop um, in in. Uh, uh, in you know w what they could get for homes, even even in a place as beautiful as Boston Edison. And the funny thing is that the the the, the family who who owns uh, who owned the place because it recently did sell uh, for an undisclosed amount of money. They live in the suburbs. It's the children who grew up here, and all of them are underwater. In, in other words, they owe. Uh, more for the homes than their their current value. Oh dear. Uh, so it's it's just it's the story of Detroit um, and in many ways uh, the U.S. post uh, mortgage crisis. Um, and this is a wild pheasant just to bring it kind of full circle uh, in the tapestry in the Briggs home. Um, uh, there, there are stories about uh, the the craftsman who came in and spent you know uh, I think maybe even uh, a year putting together uh, the, the, the library. This is in the library of the, oh of the Briggs goodness. home. And this is also in the library. It's the, the face of, uh, of one of the ball players of the day. I wish I was a baseball fan. I could we perhaps could tell you. We could ask Mike Friscolanti. We could ask maybe Mike Friscolanti. Big Detroit's fan. Uh, but uh, I think Ty Cobb is one of the faces and uh, Babe Ruth. Oh, wow. And this is uh, carved into the mantle of, 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 of the in the library of the Briggs home. Uh, and then this is in the basement of, of perhaps the Siegel home. And it's just the underbelly of yeah. the of of the old home. It's where uh, people, armies of servants, would uh, wash uh, clothes. Um, and I just think it's uh, it's so it it speaks so much to a bygone era. Right. Uh, you know, the era of the glory of uh, Boston Edison. Mm -hmm.